the mercury dips to minus 40 degrees Celsius. The cold is so extreme that even the moisture in the air freezes. Under this massive snowfield, there's a mysterious space that for some is the most beautiful place in the world. Orda Cave, made of pure white gypsum. It's the world's largest underwater gypsum cave. Our team went down to explore its vast expanse. It was the first attempt ever made to film it with 4K cameras. What lay ahead of the crew was pitch blackness and piercing cold. However, the cameras captured the phenomenal transparency of the water. And the cave itself, a fantasy world enclosed by pure white walls. Up ahead lay the so-called hydrocosmos, a universe of water that transcends the imagination. We plunged into the huge, awesome expanse of Russia's Orda underwater cave to shine a light on its mysteries. In January 2017, our crew took on the daunting challenge of filming the Orta underwater cave after a year spent preparing for it. We chose to do it in the harsh Russian winter for a reason. That's when the underwater caves are at their most beautiful because they're free of rainwater. We headed for the foot of Russia's Ural Mountains. Orda is a village lying some 1,200 kilometers to the east of the capital, Moscow. is at the edge of the village. Local people reportedly found it about 50 years ago after subsidence opened up a hole. A gateway to a subterranean world. First explorers went into Orda Cave in 1994. Local divers surveyed every new pathway they came across. Slowly but surely, they started to get an idea of the shape of the cave. Based on the information the divers had put together, we used computer graphics to produce the first ever 3D recreation of the cave. This is the only entrance to the underwater cave. The path winds like a maze. The 
the combined length of all the pathways known to the divers is about five kilometers. But just how far the cave stretches is anyone's guess. And the biggest mystery of all, no one has ever seen this massive space in its entirety. This is the hydrocosmos. Our crew will be exploring this gigantic space as well as the passages that extend beyond it. Our crew has teamed up with some local divers. These local divers have frequently explored Orda Cave, but even they say that doing so in winter can be perilous. This is Russia. It's frigid. Freezing water, snow, ice, extreme conditions. Among the team is a four-person underwater camera crew. Over the past year, they've been training hard to acquire specialized cave diving skills. Of all types of diving, cave diving is reputedly the most difficult. Risks, including a drop in body temperature, are high, especially in midwinter. A rescue team will accompany them in case of emergencies. This is the signal for let's go back. Even if only one person gives it, that's it, we all return. The team heads for Orta Cave, each member laden with some 50 kilograms of gear. The temperature is 20 degrees below freezing, but the bone-chilling wind makes it feel colder. finally arrive at a huge hole, a good 40 meters in diameter. Inside, the only opening that leads to the underwater cave is this small one. Okay! Hi! Hi! The hole goes down to a depth of 60 meters. The team has now reached the bottom. The light reveals a small spring. The temperature inside the cave is 15 degrees below freezing. Moisture in the air has frozen, forming crystals. Uh, 
back. The water temperature is five degrees Celsius. Even their breath freezes and they can barely move their fingers. The members had set aside 15 minutes to prepare for the dive. However, Frozen equipment will be a constant source of problems for the crew. For cave divers, the failure of even a single device can prove fatal. <laughs> it ends up taking the team an hour to get ready. Their body temperature is dropping even before they get into the water. Finally, the divers will head for the massive space called the Hydrocosmos. In their first dive, they'll work out how long they'll need and check for dangerous spots in order to maximize the time they'll have to film. Yes, Taka Okay. Taka Okay. Okay. The entrance is extremely narrow. Ten meters down. From here to the hydrocosmos, there is apparently a horizontal passage said to stretch some 300 meters. As they proceed, the divers extend a rope, a lifeline to lead them back to the entrance. is utterly transparent. Not a single living creature can be seen. The ceiling and walls are made of a mineral called gypsum. Gypsum is often used to make casts for broken limbs. It dissolves in water easily, so it's brittle and tends to crumble. Unexpectedly, the Russian diver leading the team enters an opening in the cave wall.
The air tanks keep banging against the walls. It's less than 70 centimeters wide. The divers become concerned about whether they'll be able to get through. In this cave, two divers had panicked and died. There are large deposits of a white powdery material at the bottom of the passage. Even the tiny amount of turbulence caused by the diver's flippers has stirred up this fine substance. The leading diver's lifeline is all they have to find their way. It's been 20 minutes since the divers entered the water. They've lost feeling in their limbs, and they're also starting to lose concentration. Hypothermia can set in when the body's internal temperature falls below 35 degrees Celsius. It's a dangerous condition with symptoms including diminished consciousness and a lowered pulse rate. In extreme cases, it can be fatal. It's another 50 meters to the destination, the massive vault. The walls are like slabs of rock cut by human hands. The place has the air of an ancient monument. suddenly disappear from sight. <laughs> the handheld lights aren't bright enough to show what lies ahead in the darkness. This place is just as its name suggests, a hydrocosmos. After 30 minutes, one member of the team gives the signal to go back. The diver is starting to show signs of hypothermia. Dives in this water are strictly limited to one hour. But the crew is now well aware of the hurdles they have to overcome to film the hydrocosmos. I know there's a lot to take in. But the only thing I can think about is how cold it is. 
I just can't concentrate. I wish I had a bigger light to see what the world down there looks like. What we saw today is just a fraction of the mysteries of the Order Cave. Orda Cave, a vast underwater expanse lying beneath the snow. How did this magnificent underwater cave come into being? For 20 years, Dr. Olga Kadebskaya has been studying Orda Cave. She took us to a place that was formed in a similar way. This mine lies at the foot of the Urals, one of the world's oldest mountain ranges. Here, you can see the geological layers from the time when Orta Cave was formed. A curious sight greeted us. Mud and other impurities have added colors, but what you see is rock salt. It's salty. 280 million years ago, this place was submerged under the sea. Orta Cave and the salt mine now sit at the foot of the Ural Mountains. But some 300 million years ago, the area used to be part of what's called the Ural Sea. Later, Massive movements of the Earth's crust pushed up the Ural Mountains and raised the seabed. This caused the sea to become shallower. At the time, this part of the Earth was arid with scant rainfall. The water in the now shallow Ural Sea kept evaporating. Consequently, a large area of the sea dried up. We carried out an experiment to recreate what happened. We let seawater evaporate. That led to the formation of salt crystals, just as we saw in the geological layers in the mine. Now, let's watch it again, this time more closely. When the seawater was reduced to about a quarter of its original volume, a small amount of a different kind of crystal emerged. It's gypsum, the material that formed Orta Cave. Gypsum is one of the substances dissolved in seawater. It starts crystallizing before the salt crystals take shape. Researchers believe areas surrounding the cave were particularly suited to gypsum rather than salt being gradually deposited. As the seawater evaporated, gypsum crystals began to emerge. But before salt crystals had a chance to build up, seawater flowed back in due to climate change or other factors. Subsequent evaporation caused more gypsum deposits to form. Researchers believe this cycle, repeated for as long as 30 million years in the same place, 
resulted in a sedimentary layer of up to 60 meters in thickness. Groundwater from the Ural Mountains poured into cracks that developed in these thick gypsum deposits. The water gradually dissolved the material, hollowing out a space for itself. Orda Cave turned into a wonder of nature, the product of a series of coincidences over a span of 300 million years. All the right conditions came together in Orda. It was a one in a million accident. A kind of earthly miracle, if you like. I think it's the most spectacular cave in the world. The hydrocosmos we were poised to explore is massive. How would we be able to illuminate the darkness? First, we prepared lights that were 10 times as bright as the ones we had with us on the last dive. And we planned to combine their power to cover a greater range. We also hired another diver to be in charge of lighting. Our project, now involving 12 people, had begun to assume major proportions. But maneuvering in the pitch black conditions was going to be extremely tough. We painstakingly simulated how we proposed to operate underwater. What signals should we use to communicate instructions? Where should the light source be located? The lighting crew would have to move in sync with the camera operators to illuminate the whole scene. The discussion lasted six hours. Finally, shooting day. We'll only be able to stay in the cold water for an hour. Taking into account the time needed to get back, we'll have only 10 minutes for shooting. One single mishap could doom the entire endeavor. This will be a formidable challenge, but I'm determined it will succeed. I'm sure we'll find something absolutely amazing. I'm thrilled. The 12 divers enter the water one by one. Thanks to our careful preparation, we're on course so far. A convoy of divers on the move will stir up the silt and cloud the water. It will be crucial to finish filming the hydrocosmos before everything becomes too hazy.
we've reached the mouth of the gigantic vault. light signal communicates that every light is to be turned on in 15 seconds. The space is enveloped in sheer walls of white gypsum. It could well be at least 40 meters wide and 100 meters long. The ceiling is mostly flat. are more than 10 meters high. In one corner, we glimpsed a magical sight, a column of rock that looks like a giant tree. Divers' air bubbles get trapped under the ceiling. edge of the space, we find two large holes in the wall. Before our eyes is a geological chronicle spanning 300 million years. camera crew has become the first to capture the entirety of this incredible watery universe in 4K. The cave we saw today was one of a kind. It was gorgeous. Most importantly, we managed to get back alive. 
I just can't believe it. I never expected to find something like this under the snow and ice of the mountains. It was magnificent. Now, how much further does the cave go? Answering that question was another of our goals. One clue was provided by features of the land that are exposed in summer. There are a number of large depressions in the areas surrounding Orda Cave. Researchers believe these were created by the ground caving in when the space underneath became unable to support the topsoil. superimposed location data of the indentations over a map of the cave. The study revealed that the depressions were concentrated around the cave. Could it be that these indentations and the cave are connected through groundwater pathways? we decided to use the depressions as a clue in our hunt for hidden pathways. We worked with Russian divers who had previously discovered a number of paths. New additions to the team were cave explorers and surveyors. Куда заходили очень очень давно, но так как гипс в любой момент может открыться дальше. Где физика показывает полости вот здесь, в этом районе, причем большие. Equipped with an underwater scooter and a reserve tank, this diver heads for the northern end under an area where some of the large depressions are concentrated. The scooter can go three times as fast as a swimmer. But the risk is high. If the vehicle should break down, it would take three times as long to swim back. The diver uses four small cameras mounted on his body and on the scooter so he can carry on filming while navigating the narrow paths. The diver has reached the northernmost part of the cave. Rocks have collapsed due to a cave-in around here. Right ahead is a gap that looks large enough to enter. One of his devices sounds a warning.
but the diver judges it is still safe and decides to leave his scooter behind and go on. He puts his lifeline around a nearby rock. The diver has found a new, previously unknown path. He maneuvers himself into it. It runs on and on. Where does it lead? can go no further. His cylinders are snagged on the rocks. Zero visibility. The needle on the gauge has entered the danger zone. The air level in the main cylinders is lower than expected. The diver can waste no time getting back to the opening. But the path is so narrow that even changing direction is hard. Fifteen minutes into the emergency. A scooter-mounted camera captures the diver scrambling his way back. Meanwhile, some other divers were exploring the hydrocosmos, the mammoth underwater space. They wanted to take a closer look at certain changes they had noted during their previous visit. Holes on the bottom had grown in size. And there were more of them. <laughs> a diver pointed at a particularly large hole. It looked very deep. But the hole narrowed dangerously, so we explored the interior remotely with a small camera we had brought with us. The hole led downward. Ahead, we discovered what appeared to be horizontal paths. They looked as though they ran deep. An expert analysis suggests the presence of another massive space underneath the hydrocosmos. Our 
investigation provided a glimpse into possible widespread ramifications of Orda Cave. A newly discovered pathway near a cave-in in the north. And the possibility of another hydrocosmos lurking under the existing one. These valuable discoveries suggest that there are unknown pathways and spaces in the vicinity. The divers who risk their lives to document the cave's changes are back safely. I can't remember the last time I was this excited. This cave has a mysterious power. There's much more to see. Things we've never seen before. The cave has changed significantly. It's like a living being. Orda Cave changes its shape like a living creature. Beyond the breathtaking sights we captured may hide even more previously unseen spectacles. Explorers discovered a hydrocosmos at the foot of Russia's Ural Mountains. The great underwater cave, shaped over 300 million years, is a miracle that transcends human imagination.